works with wood and his name is Beaton. <laughs> Ah, dawn light kisses sky above, so too eternal beams, my love. Though dusk may drown the world in grey, the night shall taste. W why, hello there! If it isn't my hero of zeal, my champion of cherishers, tis ever a pleasure to meet you in the rosiest of seasons. If you have a moment, I should be much obliged to hear your thoughts upon a certain matter of the heart. Of my heart, to be precise. You see, my sister Astrid has been demanding to lead the celebrations this year. Yet while her enthusiasm does her credit, I simply cannot shirk my responsibilities as head emissary of ardor. No matter what I say, she refuses to budge on the matter. But perhaps she would heed reason were it to come from an impartial party, and such a charming one at that. So I beg you, will you try to t will you not try to talk some sense into her? I heard what my sister told you, but I simply must be allowed to oversee the festivities this year. I have my reasons. Lisette herself has a, has a love, yet she devotes all her time and energy to the happiness of others, when she should be focusing on her own. Oh? She has a love? I must confess I didn't always approve of my sister's choice of partner. With his lowly upbringing, I had believed Fort Fens didn't deserve her. But through my work as an emissary, I've come to realize that such things as birth and station matter not, so long as there is love. Is this true, guys? And you should be embracing this occasion to foster that love instead of worrying about others. <sighs> Look here, Astrid. I appreciate your concern, I do. But the reputation of House of Valentione hinges on the success of these celebrations. As Lady of the House, I have labored to ensure that everything has gone smoothly, year in and year out. Failure is not an option. You understand this, yes? I know this full well, sister, and I won't fail us. I even have the assistance of our new emissary in training. What do you think, adventurer? I say leave it to Astrid. Astrid, and if, I, if it didn't make you feel better, I'll help too. Will this emissary in training spend more time helping... Or, you know, training. I say leave it to Astrid. I'll help too. Well now, who am I to turn away an offer of help from such a charming adventurer? I got this. Yes, with with your good self watching over us, Astrid, I believe I can ensure and trust this year's celebration to her with an easy heart. I hereby leave our legacy in your hands. So long as you stay true to your heart, he will surely do us proud. And even should something go awry, fret not. There is little I cannot fix with my indubitable charms. All right then. I suppose I'll go and embrace the spirit of the season. Phew, with Lizette gone, we may finally begin our work. Speaking of which, I must immediately impose upon you. Originally, I was meant to make the rounds with em Emily, our new recruit, to advertise the event we shall be hosting later. However, now that I have officially assumed my sister's responsibilities, I am required to remain here at her post. Might you accompany Emily in my stead? Sure. Oh? Cute! Oh my gosh, Astrid looks so cute! Ahem! In love's fine season, our task is one to spread gay tidings to all and... One? Um, allow me to present our new apprentice of affection. Yes, well, the dress is quite a departure from my usual attire, but if I am to follow in Lisette's footsteps, I naturally must adopt her lovely image. Nice to meet you, adventurer. My name is Emily, and it will be my pleasure to advertise the festivities together. Let Emily know when you are ready to uh, fly forth upon the wings of ardor and spread the word of our happy congregation. Shall we be off then? This being my first time promoting an event, I'm not certain how to start talking to strangers. May I ask you to take the lead? Thank you. I'll be sure to observe you closely. Now then, shall we first head to the Leatherworks Guild? I dare say some folks there might be interested in our event. Emily's now accompanying you. Oh, eh? Oh, this is tutorial for anyone who hasn't gotten... Okay, nice. Mine. Go forth, my sweet cherubs of passion. Deliver your messages of love and... Uh, uh, Return hither once you're done. Look, you can just see the amphitheater from here. I simply love Valentine's Day. The soft colors, the hearts, the adorable costumes. So glad I found the courage to ask Lizette if I could be an emissary. 
It's nothing short of a dream come true. And look, uh, looks like I'm early. Wonder if there's something to do to pass the time. Hearken thee for Valentine's Day, that grand celebration of ardor and affection is come once more. Cheerful and to the point, that I can do. Um, Valentine's Day celebrations are being held at Miketo's amphitheater, and I bit my tongue. There will be costumes and merrymaking and a special congregation where participants profess their love. Please join us if you have the time. Well now, that does sound like fun. I'll head over at once. My thanks for letting me know. That went well. Let's keep up the good work. Next, let's head to the, sh the Shaded Bower on the way to the markets. Oh, and I shall try taking the lead this time. Your example was most inspiring. There's no shortage of Valentine's gifts to choose from at the markets. By all accounts, the most popular chocolate is from the Bismarck. Are you planning to give a special someone a gift too? Assuming you have their skills, they say nothing con conveys your feelings quite like chocolates you made yourself. And if you're thinking flowers, a red azima rose never fails to please. Ugh, nothing feels so fine as finishing up a good day's work. Come and celebrate Valentine's Day with, with us. We're hosting Valentine's Day celebrations at Miketo's Amphitheater. Come join us for refreshments, costumes, and special events. At a special event wherein participants proclaim their affections. A handsome invitation from a handsome lass. How could I refuse? I'll bring my wife too. She loves her festivals. W wonderful. We look forward to seeing you there. Handsome? If anything, I want to be winsome. I'll just have to try harder next time, I suppose. Well, let's make our way through the e ebony snarls. And to the centaur's eye. To the north, to the north, everything you own in a box to the north. This is my brother-in-law's shop. He proposed to, to my sister on Valentine's Day, and they've been inseparable ever since. A very good evening to you, miss. Do you not simply adore this sweet season of ardor and affection? Oh, you're one of the Valentine's Day people, I take it. Indeed I am. Over at Maketo's Amphitheater, we are hosting a delightful event with gorgeous costumes to try on and an, op an opportunity to speak of love to your heart's content. Well now, what a passionate and dashing emissary you are. Thank you for the invitation and good luck with the festivities. Dashing? <sighs> I know it was said in kindness, but I just... No, this is no time to complain. Not when Astrid's trying so hard to do her sister proud. She was hesitant about the dress, said that such a tire doesn't become her. But she donned it anyway in order to be like Lisette. And she positively shines in it, don't you think? It was to help her shine even brighter that I decided to wear this suit. But I believed it would serve to pro provide contrast when we're side by side on stage. But this, this simply isn't me. I've always preferred to l look ladylike, adorable. Being called handsome and dashing reminds me how far m from myself I am right now. I need to per persevere. I know this. It isn't the time to be selfish, and yet... I don't think having a preference is se selfish. Truly? Then perhaps I will speak with Astrid about it. I'll need a moment to gather my thoughts, but let's meet back at the amphitheater shortly. Ah, uh, there you are. I tried gathering my thoughts, but I still don't know how I should broach the subject with Astrid. Nevertheless, I'm determined to speak with her. I would be grateful for your presence. Uh-oh. What? Welcome back, my messengers of messages. How fared your efforts? Oh, splendidly. We met many souls eager to celebrate this season of love. But if I may, there's something I wish to discuss with you. Uh, later, perhaps. You're looking a little pale. Astrid, are you feeling well? Oh, uh, fret not, Emily. I'm simply blanched with anticipation for today's most lovely events. Peaked with pleasure, as it were. Uh, weak with it. W weak with, I, I mean. Oh, who am I fooling? The truth is, people have been bombarding me with compliments on my appearance. Every second person says I look sweet or adorable. And it's been positively exhausting. As a daughter of nobility, I know I ought to desire such praise. Beauty and grace are highly commendable virtues in our circles, after all. But one day I met a knight, a fellow daughter of a noble house, and I found myself drawn to her strength and gallantry. Our famous ancestor, Countess Arabelle, was also a skilled warrior, you know. Alas, I never had the physical disposition for such a rigorous calling. 
And though I find comfort in incorporate, incorporating the spirit of chivalry into my guise and mannerism, if I'm to be an emissary worthy of succeeding, Lizette, I must a accept the attire that comes with the position and set aside my own pr preferences. Emily would be happy to trade outfits with you. Embracing one's own preference is also an expression of love. Self love. Facts. Self love. Let's go. It may be said that to prefer is to love. Still, as an emissary, I can't allow my personal concerns to interfere with duty. Ahem. <clears throat> Astrid, I know your feelings all too well, for I have them too, though in reverse to you. I find it uplifting to be called sweet or adorable, yet I feel anything but in this handsome suit. As emissaries of love, our duty is to help people embrace their hearts, but how are we to do this if we do don't embrace our own? If we don't love ourselves and pursue our own happiness. Facts. You're right, Emily. You're absolutely right. There I was chiding Liz Lizette for ignoring her own happiness, yet here I am guilty of doing this very same thing. In order to become a great emissary like my sister, I had believed that I needed to emulate her completely, but that isn't the case. No, as my sister herself advised, I need to stay true to my heart. Only then can I hope to become the best emissary that I can be. True to your heart, must be true to your heart, it's when the heavens will part. Right, not for your encouragement, Estrid and I may have continued to be miserable, trying to be someone we're not. Thank you for helping us to be our true selves. Aww. Come, Emily, let us trade outfits at once. Aww. Wow. Just so. To succeed someone doesn't mean you have to imitate them. Now that Astrid has learned this, she's truly ready to take over Valentine le the Valentine legacy. Which means we can start considering our future in earnest. Among other things, I still need to pay my respects to your family. Y yes well we'll get around to it soon enough. Ishgard wasn't built in a day, you know. <laughs> hey, that was that was cute. Emily lets you trigger the special scenes. Oh? The day's crowning event is about to begin, adventurer. Folk from all walks of from all walks will speak of their greatest love while dressed in the latest de Valentine fashions. You'll be staying to watch, of course. Oh, whose presentation will you want? Face of an adventurer, of adventurer, and a foster of flora. Face of adventurer? Who this? Oh, it's these two. Please give a warm welcome to Gridania's very own Mother Mion and Fufucha. Tell us what inspired you to participate in today's event, Mother Mion! I thought I'd use this opportunity to advertise the Adventurer's Guild, which operates at the Carline Canopy. To those seeking adventure or a scrumptious eel pie, look no further. And I'm here representing the Botanist's Guild. I, we hope to cultivate a fondness of flora in one and all. There's no better way to express one's love than in the company of like-minded friends. Please share with us what it is that you love. Well, I can't speak of love without mentioning tea. Oh, with, what kind of tea are we talking about? Whether I'm enjoying a cup or brewing a pot for a weary soul, tea brings me joy like little else. We serve only the finest teas at Carline Canopy, and I hope you'll all come and try some. There's a drop for every taste. To that I can attest, though admittedly my own ad adoration lies more with the leaves than the beverage. Be it herbs, or fruits, or flowers, it's my passion and purpose to understand nature's bounty for the benefit of both mankind and the star. Well now, if tea and flowers aren't, absolu aren't absolutely perfect for this season of doting, I invite you all to seek out the Carlin Canopy and the and Botanists Guild to treat yourselves and your loved ones. Thank you, Mother Mion and Fufucha. The, the soul of wood and a great oak in the making. We welcome to the stage two Gridanian mainstays, Timber Master Beaton. Beaton? And young Nicolau. Tell us what inspired you to participate in today's event. That should be evident. I desire to share my wood with the world. <laughs> Why? Why? Does that sound? I'm here with old Beat. Uh, I mean the Timber Master. To keep watch over him, I suppose. Oh, but I'm also hoping to find more younglings to play with us in the acorn orchard. So hail to new friends and, um, timber enthusiasts. Lovely, without further ado then, what is it that you love? Oh no. 
Your query is simple, but how does one aptly describe the fire kindled within a, a carpenter's breast at the sight of a quarter cleft plank? The thrill of taking hard wood in hand, stroking it end to end, feeling every knot and grain against your fingertips. No word could such euphoria could do such euphoria justice. <laughs> what? Wait, is he always like this? I'm going to pick up carpentry just for him. Oh, he's always- is he? The fact that he- he works with wood and his name is Beaten. <laughs> Bro. Uh, uh, what he's saying is wood is great. <laughs> as for me, I love all my friends as well as the carpenters who build our play equipment. That includes the timber master, of course. Marvelous! With those with a love of wood, the Carpenter's Guild has what you desire and more. And young ones who wish to play, don't be shy, run along to the Acorn Orchard and get to know Nicolau. Thank you for joining us! Infatuated emissaries. May I, may I have a warm welcome for Lizette de, de Valention and her beloved Sir Hortefence. Tell us, what inspired you to participate in today's event? Well, I could hardly forego this splendid production of Ardor and Affection hosted by my very own Emissaries of Love. Precisely, we are here to support you, and I suppose I'd like to profess my passions a little as well. How romantic! You have our audience captivated already. Tell us all about your love. Well, my love, my angel is... Oh, how am I to aptly summarize such feelings? Ever since my darling Lizette, my goddess, first descended upon me, as I lay collapsed amongst the pillow drifts, I knew that I could never love another. Even now, when she gathers me into her milky arm... Milky arms, huh? I... Wh what are you doing saying such embarrassing things out loud? And what's even worse? Is... is... I don't dislike it! When you bear your heart to me like that, it makes me think... Of all I'd like to bear in... Bro... Get a room. Get a room. <laughs> My face. That face. <laughs> uh, and we seem to be out of time. <laughs> Perhaps these two love doves can continue their conversation somewhere private. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Scion sisters. We welcome to the stage four more scions of the seventh dawn. Anor and Clemens. Tell us, what inspired you to participate in today's event? I happen to be staying in Gridania at the moment, so I thought I'd join in the celebration. For my part, I came to the Twelveswood to meet my sister, whom I hadn't seen in a while. But one thing led to another, and now here we are. What f heartwarming familial affection. With that, please share with us what you love most. What I love most is... is love. Brotherly love. Ah, how it used to wash over me in waves of blessed warmth. But that tide has receded, and I've been left high and dry. Damn it all! I can't bear it anymore! I can't bear the deprivation! Please don't take it from me! Give me back my brotherly love! <laughs> Why? Uh, give me strength. Can we make it through a single day without the mention of brotherly love? And in front of all and sundry, no less. Uh, please forget you heard any of that, everyone. Ahem. I'm presently studying at the Ast Astrologicum in Ishgard. And I love every moment of it. And once I've concluded my time there, I believe I will next explore the Mian magics. Though we've been asked to forget it, I must say I didn't quite understand it myself. Thank you for sharing, Aenor and Clemens. And please enjoy the rest of the festivities. Damn. A funny talking fortune teller and a furry friend. Oh wait, is this Orion J? And Pudding Way? Oh my god, I just realized who it was. We have with us today a most honored guest, the one and only Orion J. Augurilt. I actually haven't, I, don't, I haven't said his last name at all in a long time. Accompanied by the sweet Pudding Way, tell us what inspired you to participate in today's event. Simply these observances of love did seem a worthy endeavor, though I should chance to spy a familiar countenance among those in attendance, served as further encouragement. And I've come for the pudding! <laughs> yeah, freaking pudding way. 
What a charming duo. Now please tell us what the crowd is simply dying to know. What do you love? Of course, pudding. Pudding. Orion J, let, let, let me know. Love? Why, pudding, of course. Sticky pudding, jiggly pudding, pudding with sweet meats or biscuits. So long as it's pudding, it brings me unparalleled delight. Uh-oh. The music stopped. Oh, nice music. Were I to likewise nominate a dish for which I harbor affection, it could be not but uh, not else but cockatrice meatballs. <laughs> not only for the gastronomic pleasure it doth provide, but the fond memories it doth rouse. In my youth, knowing it to be my favorite, a dear friend oft prepared it for me. Ah, Moonbrida. From the burnt flavors of her earliest attempts to the sublime texture of her latter handiwork, to simply think of the dish doth transport me back to those halcyon days. Aww. Why well, did it need feels? Who, who asked for feels? Meals shared with a special someone, and the undeniable joy of pudding, two exceptional examples of love indeed. Why, well, I'm feeling rather peckish myself. Thank you for your participation.